I now request the distinguished delegate of India to make a statement. Madam President and distinguished delegates, a warm good morning to one and all. First and foremost, I must applaud the height of creativity of Pakistan to fabricate facts. A number of issues are being discussed in this August assembly, including the matters of sustainable development and the situation in the Middle East. But my time is limited. India, therefore, wishes to focus on a pressing issue crucial to the international community as well as for India. The world has been battling this tor torment of terrorism for long. Despite the blood and tears of innocent victims, this year alone we witnessed a number of terrorist incidents, including the attacks in Kabul, Istanbul, Paris, Brussels, in Patangot, and even in Uri, as well as the daily inhuman tragedies that we see in Syria and Iraq. Remind us that these malevolent forces are yet to be tackled. It is undoubtedly the biggest violation of human rights and has gone way beyond becoming a crime against humanity itself. We mourn the attacks, we make great plans to tackle terrorism, often forgetting to ask an important question. Who is behind this and who benefits from it? Who finances these terrorists and provides sanctuaries? Let us not make a distinction in terrorism, good and bad terrorism, which is only a babble, a waste of time, helping the many-headed monster to spread the fear. The only way delegates to counter this deadliest crimes of all is to uni unite across our differences and bring about an urgency in our response. And if any nation refuses to join this global strategy, then we have no choice than to isolate them. In our midst are nations that speak the language of terrorism, that nurture it and peddle it and export it. Such nations are as culpable as the terrorists themselves that, that they harbor. What we heard recently is the glorification of a terrorist. It is shocking that a leader of a nation can glorify a self-advertised ter terrorist at such a forum. We cannot and will not allow terrorism to prevail. Pakistan should be using its military power to stop new and threatening events. India and the international community would be willing to offer aid in countering terrorism both within and without Pakistan. Not only that Pakistan supports terrorist groups, it also suppresses its own minorities and women and denies basic human rights to them while preaching human rights to others. Pakistan has, ra has raised the issue of Kashmir at every UN General Assembly meeting for almost seven decades. However, the last time the UN discussed the Kashmir issue was in 1957. Uh, Pakistan's at attempts to raise the Kashmir issue will not have any success in the international arena till the day that Pakistan stops supporting jihadi groups and ideologies. India welcomes the positive responses from the US, the UK, and even Saudi Arabia and UAE who spoke about the need to end terrorism. The tilt in America's position by condemning the URI attacks is a crucial st step in tackling global terrorism. On this note, India would also like to congratulate the, UN, the US in its election of the 45th American president, ho hoping for a strong leadership and a great bond of friendship. Having heard the words of the yesterday candidate, the now elected president, India finds a stand against terrorism affirmative. Thank you. I thank the distinguished delegate of India.